Nutrient deficiencies are the underlying cause of so many illnesses and symptoms. And chances are you are walking around with undiagnosed deficiencies, even if your blood work is fine. So in this video, I want to show you how to correctly diagnose and fix nutrient deficiencies. I will share with you my complete protocol step by step on how to do this, because 95% of people out there do this wrong. Okay, so to get started, let's first talk about what doesn't work. Basically, the first thing you need to know is that blood work doesn't work. Your normal vitamin and mineral blood test is not a good indicator of underlying deficiencies. Why? I know this might sound crazy to you, but the reason for this is that nutrients are stored in the tissue, not in the blood. For example, less than 1% of magnesium is actually found in your blood. 99% are in the bones, teeth and soft tissue. What you have to understand is that blood is homeostatic, it's self-regulating. So when a nutrient is low in the blood, your body will pull that nutrient from the surrounding tissue and bring it into the blood. Because the blood is the most important transport medium. It will always be prioritized over surrounding tissue. This is also the reason most blood work comes back fine, even if you have clear symptoms of a nutrient deficiency. I know pretty much every major institution still relies on blood work, but it doesn't work, I can tell you from personal experience. What you need is a more representative test of what's going on in your tissue, not in your blood. The next thing that doesn't work when it comes to checking and fixing nutrient deficiencies is simply taking multivitamin supplement. Um, the reason for this is pretty simple. Biochemistry is individual. Multivitamins completely ignore this and are a one-size-fits-all solution, apparently, to the nutrient problem. But what is often not talked about and not said by practitioners who prescribe multivitamins is that you can actually have too much of a nutrient. So it's not just that you want to fix nutrient deficiencies, but there's also something like a nutrient excess. A very good example of this is copper overload, which is super common in the developed world. So in that case, taking a multivitamin, which also includes copper, would be extremely detrimental to your health and your symptoms. Instead, what you need is a customized approach that takes into account your nutritional bioindividuality. So something that shows you where you're at right now, what you need to fix, and then how to supplement correctly. That's what I will show you now. This is a customized approach that works very well. How does it work? Basically, instead of using a blood analysis, you use a hair analysis. Hair analysis measures the average nutrient levels over the last two to three months, depending on the hair length that you submit. This is unlike your normal blood test, which measures your nutrient levels at that very moment flowing through your veins. The reason hair analysis is so much better is because it's more representative of what's going on in the tissue, which, like I explained a second ago, is where your nutrients are stored, not in your blood. To give you an example of what this looks like in practice, here is my first blood analysis as well as my first hair analysis. On the left, you can see my blood analysis and I highlighted the copper value because that was the only deficiency that they could find. So what my practitioner did at the time was prescribe a copper supplement because they wanted to raise the copper value. Now, fortunately, very soon after getting the blood analysis, I got a hair analysis and it showed a very clear copper overload with too much copper in the hair tissue. The hair tissue is a lot more representative of your total body's nutrient stores than the blood analysis. So what we were able to figure out with the hair analysis is that I actually had a copper overload in the tissue and a copper deficiency in the blood. This is very common with so-called copper toxicity, which I explain in more detail in a different video. So fortunately, I did not take the prescribed copper supplement and instead worked on lowering my copper from the tissue, which automatically also brings more copper into the blood. So it automatically also fixes the copper deficiency in the blood. Unfortunately, most people only ever do the blood analysis, so they never really get the whole picture. Oftentimes, their prescribed supplements are actually making their symptoms worse, not better. This is one of the main reasons why it's so complicated to supplement correctly. 
we are really working with false data here if we only use blood tests. So the most important step in checking and fixing nutrient deficiencies is to get a hair analysis. Never work without a hair analysis. You can sometimes work without a blood analysis, but never work without the hair analysis. Now, there's two caveats to this. The first is that most labs suck at hair analysis. The reason for this is that they're not specialized in nutrient testing. They're usually specialized in finding toxic metals or other illegal substances in your hair. Many of them only do nutrient testing on the side. So what happens is when they get your hair sample, they will wash it at the lab to clean out any residue of any other contaminants. But that's not actually what you want to do because washing the hair sample before analyzing it throws off certain nutrient values, especially sodium and potassium, which are two of the most important values for your health. That's why you need to work with a lab that knows what they're doing. They must specialize in detecting nutrients in the hair and they must also not wash the hair before analyzing it. And I can really only recommend two labs in the world. Both of them are in the US, but you can send in your samples from around the world. The first is ARL Analytical Research Labs, which is based in Phoenix, Arizona. And the other is TEL, Trace Element Labs, which is based in Texas. Both of them have been operating since the 80s and they have hundreds of thousands of hair analysis, which they can compare your results to. I will show you what a sample report looks like in a second, but please don't get your work done anywhere else. Other labs are really not comparable, trust me. Okay, so the second caveat is that when you get your results, they will look something like this. And when you get them, please don't just supplement your, the values that are low and avoid the nutrients that are high. It, this is called replacement therapy and it doesn't work. You need to work with a professional on this and get someone who has experience in this field. Let me give you an example of why. As you probably know, magnesium deficiency is super common in pretty much everyone out there nowadays. That being said, when many people do a hair analysis, they get a high magnesium value back. This is kind of confusing. How can you be deficient and get a high magnesium value? Well, what you have to keep in mind is that hair tissue is representative of what your body is excreting through the hair at that point in time. That means a high magnesium level can actually be indicative of your body actively pushing out that magnesium. So this can be a very clear indicator of a magnesium deficiency because you're losing so much magnesium through the hair. I know this is somewhat counterintuitive, but if you work with a professional, he or she will be able to explain this to you in more detail and then it will make more sense. It really always depends on the whole picture and your symptoms. Only then will you be able to interpret the test correctly. Finding an experienced practitioner who knows what they're doing can be tricky. It took me several months of online research and I had to weed through a lot of bad ones. But I now have a list of very, very good practitioners, the best in the world actually, that work with clients from around the world. Again, please don't work on this alone. It can be so confusing, especially at first, that you really need to know what you're doing. And if you don't, you will run into the same problems with blood analysis where you're taking the wrong supplements and you're just making things worse. Okay, once you have your hair analysis results and once you've found a practitioner that you feel comfortable working with, the last step is, well, fixing the nutrient deficiencies. And this involves not just the supplements, but also the diet side. Because adjusting your diet to your nutritional needs is super important. It's actually more important than the supplements you take. Now, I can't tell you which diet is right for you because that really depends on your individual nutrient profile. But what I can tell you is that fixing nutrient deficiencies and also bringing down nutrient excess takes longer than most people think. I know that we're often told that taking a multi-mineral or multivitamin supplement for a few weeks to one or two months will fix all our nutrient deficiencies. That's not how it works. Some nutrients, like for example, replacing the lost magnesium in your body, can take several months up to a few years to be completely replaced. Simply because some people are so deficient on a tissue level where it really takes time to fill back these nutrient deficiencies, not just in your blood, which reacts fairly quickly, 
but also in a tissue and cell level. This is just something I wanted to highlight because I see so many people online saying that they don't have any nutrient deficiencies because they've been taking a supplement for two to three weeks, so it cannot be possible that they're still deficient in that nutrient. Again, that's not how it works. This stuff takes time and it's a slow and gradual process. Some people need to work on it a year or two until they finally see results and until it finally reflects in their tissue, so in their hair analysis. Please don't let this discourage you though, because the results can be amazing. I've seen people go from completely fatigued to having energy levels that are above average, just because they focused on their nutrient deficiencies and worked on their diet and supplement regimen. I myself have a very crazy story that I might share in a different video, and it, it, it's completely changed my life. So to wrap up this video and not make it too long, the most important steps in checking and fixing your nutrient deficiencies are one, to not rely on a blood test, two, to get a hair analysis instead or together with a blood test, then to find a practitioner that knows what they're doing, and lastly, to adjust your diet and supplement regimen based on these results and based on the work you do with your practitioner. Be patient with this and trust the process. It will take a while, but it's the most gentle way of fixing your health problems. And like I said before, I've seen results that are close to miracles. It's really like day and night. So many people are walking around with nutrition deficiencies and they don't even know it and think that their fatigue, their brain fog, all these symptoms are based on something else or they think they're just natural and they have to have them when actually they just need to fix their nutrient deficiencies and take care of their diet and supplements. I hope this video helps you get a better understanding of the topic and why it can be so complicated. Please don't trust these one size fits all fixes and do your research and work on it gradually. You will see results.